Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon. Today, we're going to go over a brief how to play video for Viticulture. Um, this is in no way a full depth how to play, but this is hopefully going to get you going if you, say, are attending a game night and just want the basic overview of how to play. Also, another caveat is that this right now here that you're seeing is base Viticulture. There are uh, additional expansions that add a lot of different modules to the game. The most well-known one is the Tuscany expansion, which actually gives you an entirely bigger board that has all four seasons to actually, uh, or three seasons instead of two, to place workers into. And we'll talk about what that means here in a second. But just so you know, uh, this is not how to play with the Tuscany board or any of those additional modules or expansions. This is pure base viticulture, which is uh, the easiest to learn and understand and should be introduced to new players. So, Viticulture is a worker placement game. You're going to have a set of meeple workers throughout the game, and you're going to be able to gain more. The trick to Viticulture is that there are uh, two main seasons that you can place your workers in. There is the summer season, which are the yellow dots, and the winter season, which are the blue dots. During a round, you'll go through the, an entire year. So if you place workers in the summer phase here, they stay there until the end of the year and you won't have them to place in the winter phase. So you definitely need to plan ahead to make sure you're not spending all your workers in the summer, but also not having an excess of workers in the winter that you can't do anything with. <clears throat> At the beginning of the game, you will be given a what's called mama and papa card. Usually you're given two and get to choose from these. And so this is gonna tell you what your starting resources are. This is gonna say, all right, if you end up with mama Falone, you're gonna end up with two standard workers to start with, a purple card and a blue card. And then Papa Morton here is gonna give you the choice. He's gonna give you, well, first four money, so there's four lira there, and he's going to give you your grande worker. And then you can either start right off the bat with a victory point, so you would start in the lead, or you can start with an additional three money if you want to start back on the start space. That's your choice. Either way, this is now your starting resources that are unique from the player sitting next to you. At the start of each round, players are going to, um, in turn order, decide where they want to wake up in the spring. This is gonna give them a uh, possible bonus, but it's also gonna determine player order, which might not necessarily be just around the table in a clockwise order. It's gonna determine uh, when they get to go in player order. So you can see first player for this round doesn't get any bonus, um, but maybe I really wanna make sure that I get first dibs to certain spots in both summer and winter. Or maybe I really need just a single coin, a single lira to build my structure. And so I am going to say, all right, I'll go in the middle of the pack here, but I get one lira. The most bottom space, which guarantees you go last, actually gives you a bonus worker just for that round. A gray meeple who um, is yours to use like any other worker, but only for that round. Or say here, going sixth gives you a victory point. So you could go to this spot every time as long as it's available, and gain victory points as you go along. So let's just say, for example, I want to uh, go here because I want a vine card. And as we saw in setup, I didn't gain any vine cards. Uh, so the green cards are actually your grapes. These are going to be specific grapes that you then need to plant in your field. And we'll talk about where they go here in just a minute. But just a few things here is that one, this is a red grape. And so it's only gonna produce, ever produce a red grape, but that grape is gonna come in at a strength of three right off the bat. So anytime you harvest a field with this Merlot in it, you would get a strength three red grape into your onto your player board. One other thing, however, is that this uh, particular type of grape requires the uh, irrigation to, in order for it to work. So until you have built your irrigation structure on your player board, you cannot place this down. Um, so, but that is a, a green card, for example, that say you might need because without grapes, there's no wine and without any wine, you're not making it very far in the game. After everybody has chosen where they're gonna go uh, in turn order for the round, 
Then we move on to the summer phase. This is where in this turn order here, you take turns placing one worker meeple down at a um, at specific locations. So say white would take a turn, then blue, then if it was two player game, it would come back to white. And this is where you need to decide how many workers do you wanna invest in the summer and how many workers do you want to carry over into the winter. This spot here is open during both seasons and any amount of players can go here uh, so it's not a, if I go here, it is blocked off. Any number of meeples can be placed here and you simply gain one coin. The different dots at each location depend on player count. So if you were playing, say, a two-player game, only one of these dots would be available, the ones with the little bonus in the middle. If you were playing, say, a four-player game, then two dots are available. And a six-player game, all three dots will be available. That just is a way to help scale the game uh, without changing the number of places or actions you can take. Now, let's just briefly uh, talk about what each of these spots do. Up here at the top, this one allows you to play a yellow card. You have to already have a yellow card in your hand, but these are... Um, specialists, uh, special workers who don't have a meeple, but by playing them, you're going to get a unique or special action that, you know, may change the tides for you. So for example, here, this sharecropper allows you to then, remember, we, we just, we played a yellow card, but he's allowing us to then plant or play a green card, even without the required structures. So he could have allowed us to play this Merlot without having built the irrigation. Um, or we could uproot uh, and discard one card from our field to gain two victory points. I'm not going to get into what all that means, but just so you know, the yellow cards are always going to be what's called summer workers. If you're the first person to go here in a multiplayer game or the only person to go here in a two-player game, you also get the bonus of gaining or getting to uh, play a second card. So this is play a yellow card. And this would be play an additional yellow card. So as long as you had two in your hand, by going here, you could play two yellow cards. Over here, uh, this allows you to draw plant cards into your hand. So if I went here, I would simply draw the top green card. But if I'm the first player or only player in a two-player game, I get the bonus of drawing two cards. So let's see what that other card would have been. This is a Trebbiano. So this is a white grape. It would produce a uh, white grapes at a strength of two, but it requires the trellis to be built before I can even plant it. You'll note that in the middle of the green symbol here for the green cards is a plus sign. That's when you draw or take the card. Playing the card, there's no plus sign. So we jump down here onto this field. This is where you then get to plant or place your uh, grapes into your field. So this is a great time for me to bring out your player boards. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot going on on your player boards here, but you'll notice there's three spots for fields. This is where you uh, would get to choose and plant a certain number of grapes in each field as long as you have built the required structures. So in this case, if I have paid two lira to build this trellis, or um, in this case, I need to find, where is my little building? Uh, three lira to build my irrigation. Now I can build or plant both of these grapes. Also, you'll notice that there is a max value. It's very small, but there's a max value of strength of grapes you can have in each field. So five, six, and seven. So these two grapes here equal a strength of five. So they fill up this leftmost field. When you're planting, you can choose where they go. And again, if you have certain cards like sharecroppers, you can actually uproot uh, grapes if, you, if they're clogging up your field and they're not help, helping you build your engine. There's also some other things on here while we've got our player board out in front of us. Um, but let's come back real quick to the um, main board. I'm just gonna push this off to the side here. This location here allows you to build structures. And if you're the first person to go here, you actually gain a single Lira as a bonus uh, for going there. Now, this is where all your structures are going to um, come out. We've already talked about the trellis and the irrigation, but we also have things like the tasting room 
For six lira, you can build the tasting room, but this allows you to, anytime you give a vineyard tour and you have at least one wine in your cellar, you gain a victory point. That would just go right there. Um, let's see, we already have our irrigation. We already have our trellis cottage. So for four lira, you can build your little cottage here. This allows you to draw additional cards in the fall. We'll get to that, but it's either a summer worker or a winter worker. The windmill here allows you to gain a victory point every time you plant uh, a grape, a new grape in your field. So pure victory points there. The yoke, where's my yoke? Right here, little itty bitty guy. This is a spot. This gives you a spot to place one of your workers on your turn and allows you to uproot one vine or harvest one field. Normally harvesting a field is a uh, winter action but this allows you to do it anytime. Um, as long as you've built the yoke, you now have access and no one else can go here. This is not a spot that can be blocked off by anyone else. The last buildings that you can build, you start the game with a small cellar, which means you can hold wine strengths up to three in red and white. But if you want to be able to say build uh, or store rosés or even sparkling wines or blushes as these are called, blushes or sparkling wines, you need to build your medium cellar or your large cellar to be able to store these uh, more expensive wines that are going to garner you more money. But again, they cost four money and six money respectfully. Also right here, you'll see that we have uh, some spots for your grapes, your crush pads. So as you harvest grapes, you're going to take these beautiful little clear um, glass beads that have been flattened on one side, <clears throat> making them rest easily. And so that Merlot, which was a red grape strength of three, if you harvested that field along with the Trebbiano, you would place uh, your grapes like that. This represents that you have those grapes in your crush pad. At the end of every year, all of your grapes are going to age and gain strength, so they would move up one. Also, any wines that you have created would also age as long as you have the cellar to fill them. So if I have not built my medium cellar and at the end of a round I have a three red wine, it's not going to get any better. It can't go up to four until I have built my medium cellar. So that's the importance of uh, buildings in the game which again, you are able to add those buildings to your player board by taking this action. The last two actions in summer are to simply give a tour. This is a great way to get money. If you're the first person to go there, you get an additional money. And if you have the tasting room and you have a wine in your cellar, you get a victory point for giving a tour. And last but not least here, you can sell your grapes, not your wine, but your grapes or you can buy or sell your fields. You can actually uh, rent out your fields uh, to someone else and you would simply uh, flip this over to say sold and you'd have to buy it back for seven. So you could uh, sell it for seven and then buy it back for seven. But say early on in the game, you really needed cash and decided I'm not gonna use this field, you could sell it. Or you could sell grapes directly from your crush pad if you're short on cash. Again, by going here. Once everyone has passed, AKA they don't want to take any more actions in the summer, we move into the fall. The fall allows you to simply draw one visitor card. That's either gonna be a blue card or a yellow card. Uh, we already saw the yellow cards. Blue cards are very similar to the yellow cards. They're just a different set of actions. For example, the manager here allows you to take an action, no bonus, from a previous season without placing a worker. So if I play him, in winter, which is normally when I would play him because he's a blue worker, I can come back here and take a summer action without losing a worker. I don't get the bonus, but maybe I really want to plant one last uh, grape before I harvest a field. So again, these, these workers cards come in very handy throughout the game. And again, if you built the cottage, you get to draw an additional one. So two instead of just one in the fall. Moving on to the winter. Um, the winter <clears throat> gives you the ability to harvest your fields, make your wine, and fulfill your orders. So the last card we're gonna look at here um, 
if you go up here, this allows you to add purple cards to your hand. These are the wine orders. So you can see here, this is a, a really lucrative one. It's going to give you a lot of victory points um, and two uh, reoccurring income, which we'll talk about here in a second. But this one is acting for a strength three white wine and a strength seven sparkling wine, which again, if you remember, requires at least a large seller to do. So let's set that one down and take a look at a uh, easier one. Here is a this person is wanting a level five red wine and a level three white wine. They're going to give you four victory points and one residual income. So by going here, you get these cards into your hand and they can help direct uh, what type of vines you want to be planting, what fields you want to be harvesting and what type of wine you want to be making. All of that you do here. So moving over, harvest your field. And if you go here as the first player, you get to do it uh, one additional time, so harvesting two fields, that would be going back and saying, all right, if my Trebbiano and Merlot were both in the same field, I would place a strength two white token down and a strength three red token down. Those, These were these glass beads that we placed onto our player board. <clears throat> the next, next to the harvest field action is the make wine tokens. And again, you can make up to two or up to three if you get the bonus action. So coming back here to our wines, and I'm going to um, throw some additional ones out there. And let's also assume that we have built up all of our cellars. So all of these spots are open to us. When you make wine, you would simply, uh, if you have a strength three wine here, you could make a, a three white wine. Or if you have a six red token, you can make a six red wine. Those are pretty straightforward. But if you want to make a blush, down here this little key says, you basically need to have a white and a red, but you get to add them together. So if I have the three and the six, I can make a nine blush. Boom, that would go there. This one would simply be taken off my board. And then the sparkling requires one white and to red. Again, you get to add them together, and you obviously need a large seller to do that, but if I added up all three of these together, it'd be kind of a waste as far as economy is concerned, but a three plus a six plus a seven is way more than nine, so that's the best I can do. And there's my nine sparkling uh, wine, and I remove the other two. Still in winter here, we already talked about the blue cards. So going here, similar to the summer where you're playing your yellow cards, you can play your blue cards here. You can also, this is a very important spot early on in the game, you can come here and pay for Lyra to train a new worker. So at the beginning of the game, you may just have two workers and one grande worker. By spending someone here, you get a worker paired up with them, and then in the next round and every round after that, you now have three workers and a grande worker. So this is a very lucrative spot to get to, especially early on. Last but not least, we have the fill orders. So we got to draw the cards here. Now we're getting to play those cards, giving up our wine tokens off our board to meet the criteria on our purple card. First one there gets a bonus of a single victory point, but remember... The main uh, thing of these is to get the victory points listed here. You have to give up off your board, discard that glass bead of at least that. You can pay higher. So if I had my nine sparkling wine, I could give up my nine to fulfill my seven order. They don't care if you give them better wine than they asked for. And last but not least, that residual track I discussed that some of them give you. If you have earned spots on a residual track, you get to put your little wine bottle token of your color on here. So if I've gained one, and then in another round I gain two more, I move up to three. This is lira, or money, you get between rounds. So before you go here and choose your um, turn order, you are gonna gain wherever your wine bottle is, and it's a max of five, you're gonna again get this much uh, additional money um, residual payments wherever your wine bottle has moved around. You, you get to boost this up by filling wine orders. 
In a standard game, uh, the first person to make it to the 20 point mark will trigger the end of the game. Um, that means you will finish out the year. And so that's why there are additional spots past 20 because somebody may keep adding points. Somebody may even uh, surpass you. I don't have the blue marker here, but blue may come up and pass you with their strategy. Whoever has the most at the end of the game is the winner. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the basics for how to play Viticulture. Again, this is meant to just simply introduce you to the game uh, in hopes that you have a, a leg up if you're going to play the game for the first time. This is not an in-depth how to play uh, by any means and does not cover any of the expansions. But hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please consider giving the video a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.